folks, Marcus here from the Ashland Fly Shop and today we're going to tie what will probably be the last tube um, in our little series of tube flies um, that I'm designing for the shop and that will probably, um, that will probably sell at some point. Um, and this is going to be the final one here. Um, and in a lot of ways, we wanted something that was kind of in this, this sherbet color, um, which is popular in a lot of places. Um, pink, orange, and white. Um, and in a lot of ways, this fly combines what was going on in the Skeena smoke with the craft fur um, or, or different type of wing there. And then also what's going on in the rain dance um, with longer fibers and a little marabou um, without a collar at the top. It's kind of just a combination of the two. So if you have the stuff to do either one of those flies, um, you will be able to tie this fly. And it's, this thing is, is simple. Um, it's really a simple fly. It's unweighted. Um, and I did just for the sake of things, I did kind of do this fly in a whole range of colors. Um, and I'd encourage you to play around with the different colors. I did go out with a more natural colored one and, and landed a fish. So they do, they do work um, and you can tie them in a whole range of colors. I think as far as what we're doing with this tube series, um, we'll at least have it in this sherbet color and we'll see, see where things go from there. So we're gonna hop right into this fly right now. And it starts on one of ProTube's uh, flexi tubes, um, or sometimes they're called 4040 tubes. And basically, with these tubes, you have a, a thin section to tie on and a thicker hook guide. And I always cut that hook guide section. Try and just be really flat when you do so. Um, because it just doesn't take that much um, hook guide to keep to keep that hook where you want it. You could keep it long. They do make these tubes in different colors. And if you wanted to um, have that color come through the fly and it can kind of support your mono loop if that's how you're tying them, um, you could do that, but I, I don't. Um, so I've got the tube, I kind of cut both ends because I'm not going to use too much space on this tube actually. Um, and I've got here white Vivis um, gel spun thread and the 50 denier. And I, I really only use gel spun um, from Vivis anymore. It's all I've been tying with for the past couple months really. Um, I did try some kind of Viva 6 and 8 dot, and I just felt that the gel spun just lays down so much flatter um, and keeps a really small profile, but it's it's probably stronger, or at least as strong as, as Viva 6 dot, but probably stronger than that, um, so that's why I like it. So I've got, just started the thread. The fly might only take up this much space. It might come just a little bit further, but it's not, not gonna take much space at all. So I'm gonna start a little dubbing loop and secure it there. And just come forward a little ways and then I'll hook my spinner in the loop. All right, so I got my dubbing loop here. on there and then the little um, dubbing ball at the back of the fly will be Senyo's fusion dubbing in the pink lady color um, and I'm just gonna use you know a pinch of it um, about that big nothing nothing too bulky 
I'll open up the loop. Slide that in there. And I might pick some out there. And then what's going to go behind that is just um, pink arctic foxtail. And if you have some spiky stuff, I kind of like the spiky stuff. Um, but I'll pull away all the guard hairs. And then I'll clip, clip the bottoms of it so it's nice and flat. And because we got this new tweezer here in the shop, I'm gonna, this is Loon's D-Loop tweezer. Um, it's a really big, if you were doing composite loops, you could get the dubbing and, and all the whole bunch of materials in here. Um, but I'm just gonna use it to help me get this Arctic Fox right into my loop here. So I'll close the loop and let go of the tweezer. And then I'm gonna give this thing a spin. And when I'm spinning my loops nowadays, I kind of leave it free where, where it's just dangling from my hand and then I'll kind of grab it and pull, pull things out. And I always have on me some way to pick it out. Um, I'll just get my thread out of the way a little bit there. And I, and I don't use, you know, the rotary um, function on my vise all that much for this stuff just because I like wrapping manually um, so that each little wrap um, I have the opportunity to get all those hairs um, laying the direction that I want. And I think that that's that fine control is, is pretty dang important. So I've got a nice, you know, little rear bump and my thread kind of leaves off right at the end of that. Um, and I, you know, for the wing on this fly, the original wing that I did was craft fur. Um, today, I think I'm going to do, um, this is Finn Raccoon Zonker, and we don't have it in the shop at the moment, but if any, anyone out there wants it, um, I'm happy to order it, and I think we will probably have, if not, if not these Zonkers, um, then some version of Finn Raccoon um, in the shop, which is kind of, kind of like Arctic Fox. Um, just much longer, um, and I'm gonna pull away some of the longer guard hairs here, and it really, you know, just ends up looking like a natural, more more uniform craft fur. Um, and this is gonna be our wing on the fly. So I'm gonna want to have it, if you have a rotary function on your vise, it's nice to look that you're laying it down kind of right on top. And I like this wing on the longer side. So I'll get one wrap in there and then another and another just to secure it. And I can already tell between the craft fur, I'll pull away any anything that's under fuzz in there. Um, can already tell the fin raccoon has a lot more body to it than the craft fur does. So I'm just gonna tie all these tags, make sure it's nice and secured in there. And I would not, when you're tying down, I'd keep them short or clip them short and just leave your thread right at the very end of that because that 
is likely going to be right around where this fly leaves off. Um, so I keep a, a bowl of water next to me when I'm tying and I just dip my fingers in it and it just helps so much um, when you're when you're getting these stations together. So I'll create another loop. I want to just make sure that it's right on top of that fin raccoon. And I'm going to put some some ostrich right over that. And again, I think this is a good use um, for this tweezer. Because one thing that's tough with ostrich is just keeping all these tips exactly where you want them. Um, especially when you're trimming. So you can kind of use the tweezer to hold everything in place and then trim all those tips. And then you've got, you know, it's just so much easier than doing it in hand, being able to um, trim everything where you want it. And I've never, I've never mattered, cared so much about the ends of the ostrich lining up. I kind of like um, having different lengths of things. Um, so I just go straight from the feather into my loop here. I'll just close that loop, get some tension on it. And with ostrich, I just try to start with slow spins. Um, and if you get that effect where the ostrich comes to one side or the other, um, usually if you spin it enough, um, you can get them all to spike out the way that we kind of like it to. So I'm just going to spin this slowly. And then this is another good use for the water. You kind of wet, wet your hands. An ostrich is so much easier to work with um, if you have it wet. And I, as you start to wind, it'll spin around, and I, I don't really worry about that until I'm right on the wrap um, that's gonna start laying it down. Like it can spin spin around in here right now but as long as where it's starting to be applied I can bend these back the way that I want them to go that I think is the important part and I'm actually not going to use all the ostrich that's in this loop. I clipped a little bit more than I like in this fly. So I'm going to tie that off right there. Make sure to get some good tension on it before you clip it. Certainly up to you um, how much ostrich you want in the fly. I, I just like the ostrich to be these long um, tendrils that come through the fly. It's really not meant all that much to fill up a whole bunch of space in the fly. It's kind of to just have this this dancing movement back behind the wing. So you got the wing here, the ostrich that'll come back behind it. You could lay that out however you want it. If you want the wing longer than the ostrich, go for it. Um, the way I did this pattern is the tips more or less come to the same point, but if one's going to be shorter than the other, I like to have the wing a little bit hidden um, in that ostrich. So for flash in this fly, I'm going to use, um, this is a new product for us. Um, 
and it's the new generation of of crinkle mirror flash and it's it's crinkle flash with with some other goodies in there too um, and it just gives it a little little extra volume a little, little more character so I just pulled out three strands and I'm pretty conservative when it comes to flash um, we are going to have some marabou in this fly so if if you like your flies a little bit flashier and you want um, you want a little more flash to show underneath of that marabou um, I would use more than three strands if that's how you want it to look. And this new age stuff um, in the name, crinkle mirror flash, this stuff is definitely crinklier. Um, they added these uh, little bit more rigid fibers in there that just give it almost like a ripple ice fiber look. Um, so on top of all that, I'm going to add some really light, light pink marabou. Um, I think the closest you could find in the shop would be um, shell pink. I'm going to peel a lot of this stuff away. This is actually a blood quill, um, not a spay quill, but it works just fine. And I do two stations of marabou in this fly, and I like them to complement each other. So I'm just going to work with about an inch worth of this stuff. grab that stem and you could this is another you know tying is is really a subjective thing and if you were tying this fly, if you liked the way that looks, you could just stop it right there. It's pretty nice, you know, peachy, peachy pink. Or salmon pink, I don't know what color pink. And then, like I said, I do two things of marabou. Um, and this is more of a fluorescent fuchsia. I'm gonna take away some of the longer feathers here. Then similar to that guy. Um, I'm gonna try to not keep the marabou out of hand at all. but we do want some volume in the fly. We want it to show up for the fish. And I think that two-tone marabou just really gives it a look that I like. And you can see you've just got, you know, a really full pattern. Got a really full pattern. Um, 
with a bunch of movement and it's got you know that that wing helps give it some bulk um, this is a you know doing that wing over the fly that's something I kind of learned from um, watching and looking at some patterns that Jonathan Farmer of Midnight Custom Flies does and I really like the way that wing bulks up the fly I think that is just awesome um, so I've got flash inside the fly that is a little bit muted and then I'm going to put some flash on the very outside of the fly um, and this is also a new new product here for for us at the shop and it's it's just holographic um, it's called Alaskan fuchsia haze but it's basically just holographic flashaboo and it's it's some pretty nice stuff I really like working with with the holographic tinsels so I've got two strands there and I'll lay lay them on my near side and get one good hard wrap in there and then another securing one and I just I fold them over to the other side and get another hard wrap in there and that's that's our fly um, if you really like having collars you could put a collar on this fly I kind of like the way the marabou moves without a collar because I've got this thin white thread it takes a couple thread wraps to cover up any stems or any coloring that's in there and on my tubes I tend to not do a whip finish I just do a series of half hitches so I've got three half hitches in there clip my thread real short and that's our bug don't have it named yet but we'll come up with something one of these days so what I'll do is I'll slide this flexi tube off the needle just switch hands with it clip some of these longer tag ends of flash make sure everything's coming down to a similar length and I'll switch hands and I'll just have this tube and I'll try and trim that tube pretty dang short and I always when you when you trim it you gotta kinda get this oval look down the tube I just come in with my scissors bend it back into a circle I often make sure that that hole is nice and open by you know put my bodkin in there got my trusty lighter um, something that I've been doing is just wetting the fly just because marabou tends to show all these frayed little ends um, and you don't want you don't want your lighter to catch any of those frayed little ends you just burn that tube back and then I'm going to open it up with my bodkin and make sure 
that it fits back onto my needle. And that, you know, putting it back on the needle um, pretty much ensures that any, you know, 15, 20 pound maxima, um, this needle, I should look at what the actual diameter of it is, but I think if you can get, if you can get the needle through there, um, you should be able to fit 20 pound max through there. Not that, not that I fish 20 pound maxima, but I know, I know some people do, um, especially in BC, which this fly will definitely be headed there someday. So when it's wet, you can kind of see how long some of these um, fibers are. And this thing just moves so much in the water. It's got a couple layers of flash, which is really nice. You know, some hidden, some on the outside. And this, you know, I came up with this fly, what's it been? Maybe a week ago, maybe a little more than a week ago. Um, and it's been been my favorite tube to tie. Um, and like I said, I've fished it in a number of different colors. And all the ones that I've swam personally have all looked really nice in the water. Um, had great movement to them. And this is a fly, I think, um, I think you all will really like if you tie it or, you know, down the road, we have them in the shop. I think this will be a good bug. I'd like to do a black and blue one. I kind of did a black, blue, purple, but um, just black and blue would be really cool. So that's our fly. Um, like I said, this will be probably the last custom fly that we'll have in, in the bins, um, at least for now. I'd expect it to be um, unweighted, but if you wanted a little weighted version, you could slide. You could put um, a drop weight somewhere in there, or you could put a little fluorescent tube or cone on the front, and that would be nice too. So thank you very much for tuning in.